Whether it's an angry exchange of words in a text message, a face-to-face -face heated argument, or a shouting match over the phone, everyone wants to have the last word. I say, ha, have a cocktail. Shut up. Long before television and cinema, there was something called vaudeville. Singers, dancers, comedians, even acrobats would show up in your town and perform for a couple nights before moving on to the next town. Now, a lot of cocktails have been popularized by television and, and movies. Drinks like Carrie Bradshaw's Cosmopolitan, Don Draper's Old Fashioned, <laughs> The Dude pounding back his white Russians, and of course, James Bond's Shaken, <laughs> not stirred martini. But the last word might be one of the only cocktails popularized by a vaudevillian named Frank Fogarty. He was also known as the Dublin Minstrel. Fogarty himself wasn't a bartender, but he was a singer and one of the best known stand-up comedians of his time. It all began on the cusp of prohibition in a bar called the Detroit Athletic Club. The best we can surmise is that Frank Fogarty came from New York to perform his minstrel show at the club, enjoyed the drink, and then spoke of it in his monologues when he was performing. The drink became a hit around Seattle, then Portland, and then New York City. In time, the last word made its way to Chicago and San Francisco, and soon after, to Europe. The Detroit Athletic Club dates back to 1887, and is still operating today. From the start, the club centered around athletics, fielding football, baseball teams, as well as sports like track and field, and swimming. It was in 1916 when the Detroit Athletic Club hosted a private dinner where a souvenir menu was printed. This menu featured a cocktail list with drinks like, well, the Manhattan, the Martini, and of course, the last word, which, by the way, had a hefty price tag of 35 cents. Oh my God, I can't afford that. <laughs> 35 cents. <laughs> I'll take 12. <laughs> Making it the club's most expensive cocktail at the time. Eventually, this flavorful take on a gin sour fell between the cracks of history and soon faded into obscurity after the repeal of Prohibition. And it doesn't show up in print again until 1951. It was Seattle bartender Murray Stenson that discovered it sometime at the beginning of this century in uh, Ted Saussier's book, Bottoms Up. Murray was looking for some classic recipes for the drink menu at the Zig Zag Cafe. That's where he was working at the time. So, a big thanks to Murray Stenson for finding this lost gem, ensuring we haven't heard the last of the last word. I've got my little uh, cocktail glass chilling with ice water. We'll just slide that off to the side and uh, slide that one in there. Now this is uh, one of the easiest cocktails you're ever gonna make. Why is because everything's equal portions. So that makes it real simple to remember. Uh, we start with some gin. Um, I've got a London Dry here, uh, Bloom. I always, I always like to try new things and you know, we should try some just to see here. Uh, yep. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Not like aggressively juniper forward. It's pretty smooth. I'm tasting a little bit of chamomile too. And apparently it is England's oldest gin distillers. And there's a date on the bottle, 1761. So we want three quarters of an ounce. Okay. Next, uh, we've got uh, Luxardo, our maraschino cherry liqueur. And again, three quarters of an ounce. Green Chartreuse, <laughs> my old friend Green Chartreuse, it's going down, you can tell that, you know. Um, there's like 120, 130 different herbs and spices when they make this. Again, three quarters of an ounce. That changes the color, doesn't it? And some fresh lime. Just put in our press here, and we want three quarters of an ounce.
That'll take a, almost the whole lime, I'm thinking. Depends on how juicy your limes are, but that looks about right. Grab some ice. Slap a lid on and shake it. <laughs> shake it like you want the last word. <laughs> <laughs> you want to give a good, uh, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. That looks pretty good. Yeah. All right. Get rid of our ice water, uh, our chilled cocktail glass, and uh, just double strain it out. Oh, look at that color. Neat. Neat. That's beautiful. Beauty. And garnish uh, with a lime wheel. Oh, how beautiful is that? <laughs> Let's give it a go. Mm. Oh, such an innocent looking thing, isn't it? Uh, I think this is one of the uh, most aromatic gin sours I've ever made. Let's try it out. Mm. That is incredibly balanced. You've got the uh, chartreuse with all those herbs whose names uh, kind of elude me right now. Mm. The freshness of the gin with the sweetness of the maraschino smoothing it out, along with the tartness of fresh squeezed lime. Definitely a cocktail made for sipping. And savoring slowly. Huh. Let me check it. Mm -hmm. The last word, guaranteed to win any argument. Cheers. Whether it's in, okay, I was doing one of these, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't wear suspenders that often, you know. It's, it's what you do. It's what you do when you wear suspenders. You do stuff. <laughs> Whether it's an angry exchange of words, I'm on Patreon now. Yeah, for just a few dollars a month, you get access to things that nobody else sees. You get bloopers, you get uh, podcasts, newsletters, and sneak peeks. You get a whole whack of stuff that you really love. So become one of my booze hounds and help support the show. This stuff gets expensive and every little bit goes back into the show. Thanks in advance. What? What? No, 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 no. Hit the subscribe button. Right here. Check out the other videos. Right here. What? I can't hear you. Have, make, a, make a last word. Mm. I got the last word.